Hello, all you beautiful people, and welcome to College Cod, baby, as we kick off yet another week. It's myself, Visions, and no, I am not with I Hold Shift. We were talking way too much about the juice and the sauce, so they had to bring in Andy. They had to switch it up. How's it going, Proper? How are you doing, my man? I don't know if switching me in for Shift is going to make any sort of less memes coming through across on the not. broadcast, but I'll try I'll try my best. <laughs> I'm doing great, Austin. Another hard day's work here for us on broadcast. Can't wait to get into the day. Yeah, me as well, man. It's going to be a great one. We got three great matches for you guys throughout the night. We are getting a little bit deeper into the regular season, so wins are becoming more and more important as we go through it here, Andy. But hard to have expectations with some of the squads. Others, I think that we certainly have expectations with that top 25, you know, certainly coming into the conversation week to week. Yeah, I mean, the top 25 is always interesting, right? Because obviously we do sure. the community power rankings and then we do the player power rankings. And things are only really shaken up once you get, I want to say like maybe from like 16 all the way down to top 25. Obviously there's some uh, consternation in between who is number two in between Fisher and Oklahoma Christian. We don't really know all the way until we get to the end of the regular season. Expectations at an all time high for a lot of returning teams with some notable players. Some other teams are falling short to those expectations as well certainly the case for us but also would not be possible without our sponsors here ladies and gentlemen if you have not heard of our sponsors just yet we have america's navy and fandom make sure you guys head over there and check them out And if you're looking for a little bit more information the navy allows you to earn a college education at their expense while enlisted you can attend classes even while on the ship the navy also offers world-class training using cutting edge equipment and technology so if you guys are looking or some kind of career path, the Navy has got you guys covered. Again, head over to America's Navy to check that out. But Andy, we got to get into some of these matches, man. Coming up, I'm very excited for this first one. I mean, coming on in here for us, St. Clair up against Davenport Panthers. This should be a great one to kick off tonight. And the Saints are just one of those teams, again, you know, the core of this roster is a lot of returning individuals. What we got to see from last year all the way into grand finals only have themselves right. just a single series loss. That was an 0-3 loss to Northwood. Can't really say that you're too surprised by it, but also at the same time, something you can be surprised with is how close they actually kept that series. I mean, 188 to 250 versus a team like Northwood, nothing to scoff at. And a round 11 Fortress Search and Destroy is something you can absolutely write home about. Priestley, Brandon, Laz, and Realaz. It's just a core of four individuals coming out from the Saints roster. You can always expect some high octane uh, affairs, especially across all the maps that we have throughout this series. But the one player you got to be always looking out for is that junior player number one, Priestley. That guy is the <laughs> truth. We remember him from the kickoff event, right? Priestley really made his name coming in. I mean, you have three freshmen on this roster, and it feels like this team has really come into their own. I mean, great record at the moment, five and one, looking to find number six. But to do that, they got to get through the Panthers and, of course, have to take a look at Davenport. We got a good look at these guys on stream and not too long ago either. And, well, currently starting to find themselves uh, at 3-3 three and three in the standings, but a chance to be able to pull ahead and find a huge win over the Saints. And, well, this lineup, Exib, Anthrax, Gecko, and Sheldon here for the starting roster. And this goes back to what you were talking about at the top of broadcast. We are now about the halfway point throughout the regular season where wins absolutely matter. Sure. Davenport are not in a good spot by any stretch of the imagination. Being 3-3 three and three overall for record count, that's not necessarily a comfort if you ask me. 0-3 losses to both Ottawa, SIUE, and they were not close. They had a 3-1 win versus the Wolverines out of Michigan just the last time that they played, but they did lose that first map on a hard point nonetheless. What I'm getting at here is that Davenport still have a lot to prove. They are starting to run out of regular season to try to prove it. Yeah, they absolutely are. But we take a look at, you know, how things are between both of these squads and how they stack up against one another. Well, you can see it. Season record, as we said, 5-1 and one right now for St. Clair. They are looking solid. Davenport, they need to put up some wins at 3-3. Three and three. You take a look at across the board here. Anything stand out here for you, Andy? I mean, it's got to be the control, right? I mean, for the Saints, mm. even if they did end up losing to Northwood, they had that was their first control loss. So if you take away the Northwood loss to St. Clair, they would technically still be undefeated in control. And that becomes a little bit more of a head scratcher when you're taking a look at Davenport, who clearly stand out when it comes down to the search and destroy. We got to see that on broadcast, and especially with the names that are represented on the Panthers as well. You almost expect them to have a very good search and destroy prowess, but they're going to need a little bit, some of that, and maybe even a little bit more of a hard point victory if they want to come out over top of St. Clair, who are looking absolutely dominant in the response. 
and that's it, right? That's where the conversation, I feel like, kind of is, uh, you know, driven towards is the response here. If Davenport could manage to at least keep them close and maybe even, you know, snag one of them, they've looked pretty good in the S&Ds, and that could maybe be your win condition here in this series. Trying to grab one of the response, stay solid in the S&Ds, and see if you can maybe keep it a little bit spicy for us. Uh, we'll see if that can happen. Obviously, easier said than done. The one thing I think we do know about the Saints is that when they get rolling, it's really difficult to stop them. So it feels like that stop kind of needs to happen right at the start sometimes, Andy. Yeah, no, that's absolutely the case, right? I mean, that's why we start talking about Priestley, first and foremost, for the Saints roster. This guy starts feeling himself. His team is keeping pace with him. It's a very hard team to shut down. You're looking for players like uh, Thrax on the opposite side. Same with Gecko to be able to keep pace with the Saints as a whole if they want to be able to take one of those respawns you were talking about. You're going to absolutely need it. Everyone's going to have to be firing, but let's take a look at what we have now for the series layouts and how we're going to be able to kind of navigate through this very first series. A lot of embassy to kick us off. Double dose right into the start of it. Got a little LSC low control for the map number three, and then a Mikado hardpoint and a fortress for the last map if we go the distance. The Embassy Hardpoint is very interesting to me to even be allowed through. I mean, you can see the vetoes at the top of the screen. Clearly, the Saints do want nothing to do with Zarqua Hydroelectric. I can't blame mm. you. Those water routes absolutely make me lose <laughs> my marbles whenever I'm playing this game. And they got rid of the LSU of Search and Destroy. But what really makes me wonder why they're still letting Embassy Hardpoint all the way through is because they, it didn't have a good track record for them. It was the one map that they lost to MNSU when they played uh, against the Mavericks. I want to say that was like in week one. And it's one of their five map losses. So. Definitely looking to at least bolster maybe some of their map set for Davenport on the opposite side. It's tough to say. I mean, what mm. are your stronger maps at this point as well? Because you have such an array of win-loss records across all different game modes that it's pretty much just pick what you're comfortable with. And clearly, they want nothing to do with Fortress Hardpoint, nor Mercado Lasama Search and Destroy. No, definitely not. And, well, at least from what we've seen even from, like, the very beginning of the year, I mean, Embassy feels like it's something that's been favored for the Saints, like, going all the way back to that kickoff tournament. I can, like, vividly remember, like, Priestley, like, taking some of those, like, top chals from AC to PD and winning a huge majority of them, being a huge threat. So, obviously, a lot of comfort here. But, uh, again, coming back to our point, you really feel like Davenport need to be able to come into this series, try to grab one of these respawns, have a really, you know, close map number one, if not take it away here, and just try to have, you know, the leader's advantage versus the team like the Saints. I mean, we've seen them lose at least once so far in the season, but for the most part, it feels like a lot of their series, you know, have been just kind of swift, especially once they start to grab map one, map two. Yeah, no, it's... Totally right. I mean, for St. Clair, their only time of ever getting past map three is either in their 3-1 win over MSU or even their, uh, what was it? Uh, I think that there was one other time that they went 3-1. I'm not too sure. I don't have that written down. But I mean, if you again, sure. for the St. Clair roster, something that I was able to pick up on very directly at land last year during the Vanguard season is that they are an absolute vibe squad. They, again, when this team starts <laughs> right. get letting the, the, the juices flow, right, they, they, they are very hard to shut down. Their comms are absolute. And, and again, a lot of players that were obviously there, fame comes to mind. Uh, Silly also comes to mind. Mm. He's always talking about Priestley, that this guy just knows where to be at the <laughs> right time. So again, to echo your talking point, again, for the Embassy Hardpoint, with an AR, keep in mind, you Priestley needs to be shut down. You cannot allow this guy to find these routes for free. But they, even on the opposite side for Davenport, man, I, I mean, it, it's tough to say again why embassy would even want to be brought back continuously they played it i want to say yeah. a, a majority of their times it was going to be their map for a handful of times as well and they did end up reaching it i, I want to say versus a orange and they lost it 212 to 250 but it's a map mode combination that we haven't really seen from them yet so it could be that wild card if you will maybe to get their uh, their guns hot and, and maybe be able to take that map one win again we are putting a lot of stocks into this davenport panthers roster just to be able to seal hard point this has to be it yeah, without a doubt. You feel like this could be one of them. I mean, this is one of the maps that there was just so many lockdown money hills, like especially the back three. We see the subs come out. We see some of those close quarter setups in office. And I mean, you can start chaining hills together. We, we've seen this map be a very special one in terms of comebacks all the time. It's just it's just how it works with kind of some of the hills and some of the spawns. If you're controlling kind of the back truck area for P2 and then you're being able to then clear everything out, push all the way left as I knock over something and then try to push all the way to the ladder. Like you can control that left lane through parking lot and just allow yourself like free entry into the building for your subs. And they can really make some of those fast moves across the map, set your team up and win some of those rotations. And I mean, that is simply what this map comes down to 
who is winning the rotations, who's there first, and who is coming up with the key gunfights in those rotational moments. So uh, you talk about having to have some of those players that need to step up for Davenport. I mean, those are the keys that I think they have to look at if you're going to take these guys down because, you know, the Saints, they're really good with their fundamentals, man. They really are. And again, just uh, to build off of that as well, it's been interesting to be able to look at, I guess, the triage that is the different formats that we have in between collegiate, challengers for you and me as well and then obviously the pro play for cdl and something that i i've been really harping on for a lot of these collegiate athletes when they are playing on embassy is that they don't really get a lot of high ground positioning that's where again uh, i hate to continue to, to shout this guy's name into, into the cosmos but i mean that's where priestly absolutely thrives that's what we talk about him top bridge top pd top paper those positionings for an ar when you're locking down time say on p4 or even for p5 for example can shut down those sure. longer lines of sight and it becomes such a hard head glitch to be able to get an AR from that positioning. So I'm really looking for uh, Davenport, as you were saying, to get those ARs in positionings, hold down those longer lines of sight, and allow their SMGs to be able to get into the face of Priestley and just be able to shut this guy down. Because if you don't, honestly speaking, you might go on a wild tangent in a, in a massive three at that. It can happen, man. He's one of those takeover players, but now we'll just take a second. Looks like the players are still getting into lobby, ladies and gentlemen. We do apologize about the wait. The players are holding us up as we can't wait to get into the action. But with that said, we do have an after action report to throw to. We'll be right back after this. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are ready to go. Match number one here tonight for College Cod. St. Clair up against Davenport. We've basically laid it out for you guys. If you're just tuning in, well, we'll take you through the actions, but let's get into it, Andy. I just needed some time to be able to go through and change my shirt back to what I was wearing through the opening broadcast after the after action <laughs> report. But St. Clair starting off on the favorite <laughs> side of the map, and you were seeing why. You want to start on this P4 side, you get top paper control, you get control over towards that parking lot lane, you're going to be looking at a pretty good rotation earlier on. There's still a lot of time left to battle over inside of P1, and what you can see Davenport, they are very aware of it. They're getting admin control. Yeah, without a doubt. And all this time, pretty much going neutral. Sheldon, I don't know if he gets a sound cue or what. But that's a ridiculous first kill for him as we swap over. And we take a look at how the game state's going. And, well, all of a sudden, rotation looks to be at least solid at the moment here. We'll see if they can try to hold on to it. Davenport a chance to be able to build off this 15 seconds off the one Oh, oh. Pendy, though. He's We're keeping not. in Nixie. Oh, you get those top... Tennis court spawns, you hit all the way through pots, and you come back behind P4. Oh, razzle-dazzle for St. Clair Saints. They're going to break it as soon as P2 does pop. Down before Panther's going to be having to look for an immediate break, but Priestley's just already keeping things dicey mid-map. Oh, man, it's just not one of those moments you like to see early. Still, Panthers can recover. Can still come in for a break here. 35 seconds to fight for, but the kill still convincing for the Saints. They'll find three of the four. Jelen's the last one up. Chance to be able to try to do something magical again. But I don't think it's going to happen. Laz is there. He'll finish him off. And, I mean, St. Clair, they're already threatening this rotation anew. This is where things can get dangerous. Is that if Bendy can stay alive here, top AC has a little trouble getting at least that first on a Sheldon. But you start getting top bridge control, this AC part as well, you're going to be in a pretty good spot. The only players that might be able to threaten this early, you see Ixib already just trying to get orange controlled. Not going to expect Bendy to be top AC, oh. who still finds yet another two-piece. Drax is there for the trade, but the rotation is still being fought over. My goodness. Not good news right now. Davenport going to have to put it together. And, I mean, we said this map really is determined by rotations. The team that wins the important rotational fights is the team that typically is going to win the map. The gunfights come through. Priestley now able to get involved. Nice little double up. Long range shots almost there to shut down another. But maybe a moment here for the Panthers to try to get in. They will clear off the point. And a chance still to fight for 30 seconds here on P3. Yeah, this is something that needs to be talked about as well, especially for the Saints. Priestley coming into Modern Warfare 2, playing a lot with the Vaznev with this roster, has just been looking so stellar. I mean, it's setting up players like Realize. You wouldn't know it uh, because of the state of the game, but that was his 10th <laughs> engagement. He is 8-2 and two on a 3 spree. Yeah, the rotation got broken up, but through all the monotony, I mean, you're fine with that if you are the Saints. I mean, you can chalk this 12 seconds. Just kidding. Bendy hits it for old. He's going to be able to soak up 10 seconds of the rotation towards new. Again, is being held by St. Clair. St. Clair want to run away with it. Sheldon, though, it's a well-placed Semtex into the stairwell. We'll clear out the first one. Thrax is also clearing up the top, so he's got a chance to be able to pinch this play up and try to allow the Panthers entry. Kills need to come through, though. Priestley there for two. Gets some shots on Thrax, but Thrax now finds to himself and finally a moment here for the Panthers. They're in the hill. They have a chance to lock down some time. It's just all about defending and trying to hold these lanes. 
playing this really turn them up, and this might just be the wisest choice, just to stack around the hard point. Make sure that at least you can find some trades. See the Saints, especially on the minimap, they're struggling to try to find where some of these players are located at, but now it's just Sheldon, up the live on the hard point. He does have exit here, at least maybe for a trade, but he's back seats. He's gonna get taken down. This is a big 20 seconds for Davenport to allow St. Clair to get, but it's what you're gonna have to do because the rotation over towards B5 is a big one. You gotta get your subs in and around laundry, around orange as well here, Austin. Be able to soak up the majority of time. Absolutely. You're here first. They've been zoning a little bit off of the last hill, but they haven't found the exits in. Not like this, not again. Rax needs to come up with a big moment here and he's good for the first. Challenges out for the second. Ow. How about that for some confidence? Thrax just runs at him. Finds the double, and that's going to secure some very early and much needed time here for the Panthers. Thrax doesn't find that QP, so he's saying where find themselves. And you just have such a turtle up setup again for Davenport. Just nobody again trying to deny space. Nobody trying to get information before you even think about it. St. Clair just pinches it from two different angles. The trades, nowhere to be found again. 30 seconds left here on P5. St. Clair setting themselves up to soak all of it feel like this could be a lot bigger than it is right now on the scoreboard. Feels like St. Clair have been so good with their breaks. But just up marginally as Thrax again, the entry man, able to get himself into the point. Has to try to defend against the rest of the Saints players that want to give this another hit. Why not? P1 spawns right next to it. 15 seconds up for grabs. Nades come on through. And Sheldon, how about that for another big moment for him? He finds a good double. And well, all things said, I mean, it feels like Saints have been dominating the feed as far as the slaying department here, Andy, but Davenport not far out of this one, just down by about 20. We look at the ARs in between, like, Bendy and Realize, like, you have 26 kills and only 16 deaths between the two of them. Do just because you're locking down the lanes, doesn't mean your SMGs can set up comfortably inside the hard point. It's Bendy that has the majority of time at a minute and a second, but Davenport Panthers, I mean, even just trying as they might, be able to fight over the back 15, being able to break and maybe go 20 for 20s, especially towards the latter half of this the first set. Keeps this game just about even. St. Clair need to be able to shift their focus more around the hard point when they get the breaks in the setups. Mm. Davenport on the opposite side need to stop turtling up. They need to start denying more space when they when they are alive in the active hill. I'm right there with you. Let's see if they can try to turn it up. Sheldon has been great. A lot of key kills for him. Saw that rotation just a little bit before. Back into the first set it was huge, at least early around P2, but they couldn't hold it. Now there's a chance to be able to fix the mistakes. You have to read this push from the back right now. It's a double hit here from the Saints. Trying to get that close spawn, and they might be good for it. Thrax can't find anything. x -Sip still in a really good position to try to disrupt the play, but the Saints are onto him. They know what's up. The challenge comes through, but he'll still win the gunfight. One more player in the hill. Challenge comes out. x -Sip under fire from the back and the front, but the support is there, and the Panthers, they find their way in. Yeah, what a good way to tell your teammate just to lay down and to shoot him in the back a few times. Now Exit has a great staircase head glitch that he can just watch the back alleyway and he will find Blast seemingly for free. And it's like you were saying, this is immediately rectifies the issues that Davenport had the last time they were around P2 in the first set of hard points, even getting the information, cutting down mid-map. Trades might be coming through, but you're making this very costly for the Saints to try to fight for the scrap time. 20 seconds of that scrap time. Both teams want to get their hands on it. Relays with that double. That should really shut things down and likely lock in the rotation win here for the Saints. Now it's just about fanning it a little bit, taking away some space and trying to put some pressure on the Panthers, making their move across the map. Sheldon, first one up top. He'll be picked off, no problem. Three in a row now for Relays. Last, I mean, he's got a hell of an off angle, but the rack just jumps over his head, gives him a little stomp. Says, thank you very much for the kill. The Bendy stick. now feels all the pressure, but the stick comes out. He takes out Gecko. Two more players for Bendy to deal with. Can he deal with all four? That's three. That is four. Bendy, he takes on the world, and he'll shut everyone down. Saints are still good for some time. How about Thrax? I mean, you want to talk about confidence coming out of the young man. I mean, he is just ego channeling everything this side of the Mississippi, plus some extra, but just because he's finding a couple key kills doesn't mean that it's going to be the inevitable break that Davenport need. Last challenge, especially coming in for the time. I mean, Thrax just comes flying in. Realize just deals with him seemingly for free. If you don't find that four piece, this completely goes awry. Bendy having himself a field day here on Embassy Hardpoint, 24 and 14. And you also got Blaz that is threading the rotation over towards new. Yeah, it gets traded out. This continuously denies Davenport to try to take more space ahead of this rotation. All right, here we go. Panthers down by quite a bit right now. Need a strong hill in office. And they got the positioning. It's just all about the gunfights and get-go. He's here in multiple footsteps. And oh no, it's not a good start. Priestley, he's just entry for two. But Thrax again. Maybe the savior here for the Panthers. He's found two. 
He's got more to deal with, but the regen comes through. He resets the fight for three. Thrax, one more to deal with, and Gecko is there for the trades. It is chaos and mayhem in the point, but it's still presence in the hill for the Panthers. Now there, there is less destructive ways of going about getting your visa here in the embassy, gentlemen, let me tell you. But even more so than that, Davenport need to deal with these lurking members. I mean, contested time is not good time, if you ask me. You have more numbers if you're Davenport. You just got to find where these players are located at. Sheldon will get the last laugh on the relays. This is a big 20 seconds just to chalk up yes. if you are the Saints. You're going to be able to flip the lead if you are the Panthers, but you need to find these rotational battles. Priestley drops down, almost ends up finding the snap on the Sheldon. who got the first bullet, but... Would have been a big kilt, maybe just so that way you don't have to turtle up as much. This is a great look for the Panthers coming into P5. Oh, look at the teamwork. They're actually going to force relays right out of the position here through the back parking lot, and they're just going to flood right through. So now, a chance to actually get in here and contest this point. Thrax will be taken out. Priestley's just going to wait in the kitchen. No Kahlo comes through. Exib just not ready with the gun up. So Priestley, three in a row. Another huge spree for him to try to keep this alive and allow the Saints to maintain control as they start to get close to that 200-point mark. Pinch is in. Uh, you got Sheldon that's working in through the bottom doors, but it, it was not coordinated coming through the opposite side. What was setting up to look like some stellar teamwork. St. Clair just have the better, I guess, gunny at that moment of time. Just no communication, it would seem, coming through for Davenport in these key and crucial moments. Even right here for Gecko, last player alive. If you're lucky, maybe you can go one for one, and that's all he's going to be able to get. 20 seconds, St. Clair Saints will get the majority of this. Davenport might be able to claw their way in maybe for maybe about five seconds or so, but it's really just not good enough. You had a good you had a good enough break attempt and pinch setup, and it just it did not follow through the way that it needed to. 232 to 192. You have to deny so much time for the Saints here off of P1 and Davenport want to work their way back into this hard point. Oh, do you ever. Saints just need 15 seconds to lock this one up. Priestley's on six in a row, has a cruise missile, just in case this one extends to the second hill. The Saints now are putting the pressure on the Panthers. They have to respond. They will be able to remove one. He flashes just throw himself right back on the point if he wants to. He's just going to wait patiently for the first kill. Does he get a read on the second? Eight seconds now up for grabs. The Panthers have to do so much. And, well, that's a huge gunfight out of Priestley. He can threaten the second, but Sheldon! How does he find all three just like that? It's a multi-kill that comes through for maybe all four. Davenport not out just yet, but still so much work needs to be done. You have no idea where these players are located at. You got Priestley, that's top paper. He has a free good look at this. Drops down inside of bathrooms as well. Sheldon needs to go big again. He has Gecko's assistance. Has to ego chow the hill. Needs to get these players out, but it's simply just not meant to be. That leader's advantage that was built earlier on and then cemented in P5 was just too much for Davenport to claw their way back into the game fully. You really do feel like that if that pinch came in, that break was at least inevitable for P5. Maybe would have had a different outcome here going in towards the third and final set. There's Sheldon's look. He found four within that one play. And it almost felt like that you were going to be able to have that moment to be able to break your way back into the game. You had that side of the map. But Thrax pushed up underneath the bridge. And that opened up the back embassy spawn. Which is where that pinch inevitably came through to be able to get top paper. To get inside of the bathroom stalls as well. To look at all of these Panthers players. We thought everybody for the Saints that were still spawning back AC, it was just not there. Again, it felt like the communication was just a little lacking when it came down to Davenport, where the Saints fall back to their old fundamental ways. Austin, they walk away with a nice map one win. Do they ever? And to be honest, I still think that that could have looked a lot worse than it was with the way that they were slaying out and the lead that they had built up very early on. I mean, we saw that beautiful transition from P2 to P3 right away, winning the rotation while still keeping presence on the old time. It's moments like that where you start to get a little bit scared for the opposition, but a lot of moments here from Sheldon, a lot of moments from Drax to keep them in this game, but you need a little bit more than just to keep you in it. You need to grab control at some point in time, and that just never happened. Dude, just look at Bendy right here, too. 12-4, and 8-3 and three for Relays. I was talking about them earlier on when we were talking about the P3 to P4 rotation. It just felt like these guys were everywhere that they needed to be. And just to kind of echo your point as well, we had some really pop-off moments from Sheldon, the Ego Chows from Thrax. He was getting away with highway robbery, it seemed, at some points in time. But they were never working in tandem with one another. It was either Sheldon pops off, Thrax pops off, maybe Exit can find himself a multi-kill here or there. But it was never coming together fully, it, it felt like, comparatively to the Saints, where if Real Ace was overwatching, Priestley make these upfront plays going inside of P4 or going and holding down P3 as well. It always felt like that there was a means to the end for the Saints setups where Davenport was just kind of running and just hoping to win gunfights. Yeah, and I mean, so many big moments for Priestley in and around that P5 hill. I feel like that's where it was really sealed. And there was a really good moment at the end there where St. Clair, you know, started to lose numbers outside a parking lot. 
And it just had to be a huge double from Priestley to shut that play down from the side door, allow them to continue to have that close spawn. And, well, they funnel in, keep the resources around the point, and they close it out. 250 to 202. We take a look at the stats. 23 of those 31 from Priestley were non-traded. We talked a lot about him, so only rightly so that we re-hit the point. He has a massive game, drops the most amount of kills, but it is tied by Sheldon. I mean, he was doing the exact same thing, and... That's what we asked for, right, Andy? We said we needed to match this. As much as it's hard to shut this player down, you need to be able to match the slang. The slang was matched. It's just a couple of those key moments that cost them there through those rotations. It's just two big stark differences that kind of scream out at me. I mean, you look at Gecko as the unsung hero for Davenport. 3,800 damage, 12 assists, 15 out of 25 kills non-traded. Where was the follow-up coming through with all of this damage that Gekka was laying down? I mean, yeah, Thrax 24 and 25. Felt like he was winning, uh, again, a crazy amount of gunfights, but... I mean, Exib, I know two minutes of hard point. That's a lot of OBJ time just to soak up. But it just felt like that if you have that SMG in hand, Gecko's finding all this damage. These kills need to be solidified to be able to outwardly win these rotations, to be able to outwardly hold these hard points. It just felt like that the follow-up from all the damage that was coming through the AR lineup of the Saints was just that much better followed up from the SMG lineup. Well, map one in the history books. Map two, we are staying on Embassy and we'll head over to search and destroy. And the good news is, is listen, this is where we kind of framed up the series. If you can try to at least keep the map number one close, I feel like that's the start. Because you know that there was winning moments throughout that map number one for you going forward. But if you can win this map number two, then I think we start to build up this narrative in this conversation where there is a real chance to take down the Saints and try to pull off what would you know, be an upset, I think, in a lot of people's eyes. Uh, but getting through an embassy, working around the scope of the Saints, there is a lot of problems I think you're going to have to solve. And I think we're going to see how prepared they are with some of these opening rounds here, Andy. To my understanding, uh, we, we still have a, a few missing maps as far as records are concerned. But the two times that we have seen at least documented coming through for the Saints on Embassy Search and Destroy, they have a 12 force uh, round record. So just something very interesting to, to be able to think about. And on the other side for Davenport, I mean, for Embassy Search and Destroy, this is their most map two that they have played. And they have lost it a majority of times. There was only a handful of times I want to say that they were able to walk away with a positive round count and push that map four. But it's in here for a reason. It's your map pick. You obviously want to feel the comfort when it comes down to it. But uh, and again, it has to be talked about. It has to be screamed to the heavens, if you will, that Davenport have to win this map number two. If you don't win this map number two, going to an LSU look control, you saw they're in the best of five series. And that historically, through group stage, has not been good for Davenport. And historically, control is the best game mode for St. Clair. So again, map number two, losing map one the way they did for Davenport, you just got to have it here. You got to have it here, man. I mean, it's, it's just what we always talk about. And it's because we see, like, so few reverse sweeps come in. We love to talk up that story. We love to see that story come to life. Uh, but it's a situation where, you know, you, you just have to win. You can't make mistakes going forward in the next three maps. And not making any mistakes against this Saints roster with two more respawns, I think you can see where we're driving the direction of this. Uh, it's not going to be easy, and I think I'm with you, brother. I think you need to find a win here and uh, put some of this, you know, S and D, uh, you know, good records that we've seen from four and two. Try to put it to good use. Maybe try to fix the mistakes we've seen from Embassy from the past, um, and try to find a big upset. But uh, I, again, this is comfort. I feel like uh, for for the Saints, it shows in map one, map two. It's likely going to show as well. So you have to make them uncomfortable. I don't know if that means just bringing a scope out and stopping Bendy and Priestley from, you know, kind of getting these like really aggressive channels out of the way. We'll have to see. It's up to them. Try to fix it. Try to come in with something new potentially to change up their embassy search and destroy. But Andy, we got to have it. We got to see the Panthers bounce back here in map two. Let's see if they can end up shutting it down. And Sheldon looks to deliver on your promise. Boom stick to start things off. Looking for these picks. Not an aggressive hit over towards B. So, Blaz, I mean, he was off creek without a paddle on that one. Exit's going to take him down. Talk about Call of Duty timing, man. My goodness. You're watching it for the first 20 seconds of the round. You just go to peak top AC, and Bendy just sneaks around the corner. Now we'll even us up. Three versus three. Thrax in a position where he could make a play, but he's just more kind of scouting out for information, trying to get an idea and a look on this cross. The relays is going to be responsible for it. And he might have a gunfight versus Gecko in the back. He's going to spot him, but the shots don't finish him off. Nate shouldn't tag him as well. Everyone's still very much alive. Or time that you kind of jostle with this bomb and trying to think about a play. You're allowing relays to push all the way up. Thrax gets the sound cue, rips his head clean off. But Bendy's still alive with the boomstick. He takes down exit. That's bomb drop. We're running out of time here, brother. Oh, we are. Someone's going to have to go up top and grab the bomb. And Bendy, look at this play from him. He's actually just going to flip. This to this side of the map 
And Lightsy's gonna exactly. surprise Gekko. Oh, Whoa. the pistol. <laughs> He's on weapon swap. There was hey. certainly a chance to maybe pull that one off. Not gonna happen. That's three in the round, I think, from Bendy. In the round two with the sniper, one with the X12 pistol, and oh, Gekko had his gutty up right there. Bendy's play just completely falters, and we would have been a 1v1. Yeah. Different narrative for that round, for sure, but I'd appreciate it coming from Bendy. Still feeling the hot hand, finds two with the boomstick, pushes over towards Pots with the pistol, <laughs> feeling the confidence out of this young man. He comes into this round on a 3-3, three three. still keeping the sniper. I can only imagine that he'll either go up top the way that he's looking, and it seems to be the case. As this looks to be a full be executed out of the Saints. Oh, and they are crossing. Gecko. He's got so much to deal with though. Out front, and well, he is dealt with immediately. Priestley finds one with an aid. Bendy finds Sheldon. And that is the round. Good luck. Have fun. One before here for exit. And he will fall as well. Fall this round for the Saints. Well then. I don't know what analysis you want me to, to give you here. Um four players cross. Four players alive. It's just such, it, it's, a, it's a day one setup, right? I mean, if yeah. you're not going to get chowed on the Xbox cross, either with a boomstick or, or with an early nade that comes over the top, more than likely, especially with how long that last round lasted, there should have been at least a trophy system to keep the Saints safe. They just all cross again for free. There was nobody back tennis courts to deal with it. And even if they were, they got eviscerated immediately. You got to combine eight three in between two different players. And, and Blazin realized if you have to even find a kill, but Priestley and Benny are having their way. <laughs> are they ever? All eight. An ace in, well, well, not necessarily an ace, but you could say that if you were just tuning in. You wouldn't know the difference. 4-0, chance for streaks. Bendy looking for that scope. Over to the right side of the map. See if he can deal with Sheldon. Sheldon might have put it away, but Thrax. Oh, he will be taken down. Bendy just looking for kill number <laughs> six, and he does that? Are you kidding me? A little jump shot over the top? My goodness. But if he world star Sheldon right there, I just, <laughs> oh man, I would have uh, lost my marbles even more than they already lost. Last pops dead silence, by the way, and he clears all of orange. Bomb's going to get recovered here by Gecko, and they might have just made the five head play. They're going to rewrap all the way through parking lot. The biggest considerable amount of doubt is you still have to clear all of this building. 30 seconds remaining on the game clock. I think with Blaz immediately going over towards A, he knows that he can just turtle up and try to play for a retake. Problem is that he has a Vaznev, and he has no more Dead Silence. That is certainly the problem. Stunning a nade, though. Might be getting some sound cues here as well. He's going to fly on out. Take out Gecko, and oh, shots. They were certainly on target there. Sheldon has to work for that gunfight, but luckily, no 1v2 comes through in the Panthers. They find round one. Sheldon with the AR. Oh, he was blood screen too. He was literally a bullet. A half a bullet. A cold breeze comes through, and Sheldon gets knocked over. We have a 3-0 scoreline, but big trades coming through, especially on the Bendy, but not before he finds his six kill. So he's not uh, running score streaks, so he will get that cruise missile. That's big information when it comes down to Embassy, and it could potentially either be a free post plan situation, if not free information for the early round. Without a doubt. This A-bomb execute, excuse me, is so much easier with this streak. As long as you can coordinate it correctly. Bendy just going to do a little bit of searching again. He's been working through this parking lot side quite well. So this team's going to let him work the angles. Now starting to get a bit of a push here. As more is being clear, the timing on that door peak is interesting. Yeah, Sheldon now is able to find a nice little angle down low. He's at least able to go one for one. Exit has just been peeking through this little crack, waiting to see if he can make a play. But he's also the trophy player. Time to make a play has certainly passed. And your teammates are starting to fall around you. 2v2, though, post plant situation. The biggest problem is you got relays all the way in the back of the God pickup truck, Eddie. Tough one to break down, without a doubt. 2v2, though. Gecko, good spot. Dead Silence about to run out. Might be able to find a kill on to Priestley, and they do. They find him cleanly. Relays all the way at the back. I'm sure he's got a spot for us. Let's see if the nade will hit as the shots might just come through. Gecko's going to have to stop him from getting a look, and Gecko does. Talk about the trust. Talk about the teamwork. The Panthers, they break down the setup. They get in there, and they'll stick the defuse. A good isolation by Proxy. Whether in sound cue comes through on the player that's on the backside of the trailer and said that little uh, cut out, you're more or less almost expecting, if you didn't get child top X or from Xbox ramp immediately, that 
That last player is certainly going to be on that god heady all the way in towards the back. Nade does not land cleanly enough, does not actually get there. And I'm pretty sure you would have had a perk that kept you alive, at least from the nade immediately. But even more so than that, great retake overall coming through from Davenport to at least answer back with the two rounds that St. Clair opened up with. St. Clair, kick things off hot, but Panthers now starting to find some answers, starting to work for these round wins. Thrax, the big playmaker from map number one, pops the dead silence, wants to maybe look for an angle to get through mid and bendy. Don't know if he sees him. He's just going to back up and, well, the angle is not going to be watched from anyone else here. And Thrax might be able to come all the way around. Doors are being busted open and Bendy's going to call in the streak. Good for info and might be good for a kill, but no, the trophy will save everybody. But Thrax still able to get one. One for one trades come through. Panthers up by one life. Oh, Thrax uses that dead silence. He gets top P5. And now it becomes a little bit more of a head scratcher. Priestley finds the first, but dead silence. Vaz, you have both your throwables left. He's not electing. He even uses Dead Silence. He's making a lot of noise. Thrax is going to be able to get it cleanly enough. Thrax wins that round fully. Not to mention how you end up getting the cruise missile out from Bendy as well. Drops it right onto a trophy system. Now, I don't know if, if the information was there, but typically when you try to drop at least the cruise missile down, especially with Priestley that was still top AC, you knew that there was going to be a trophy system up there. You landed up top of P3, and the splash damage deals with the players all across tennis courts, but neither here nor there. Three rounds on the bounce for the Panthers. Thrax, like you were saying, was the playmaker from map number one. Continues on with that narrative and finds a crucial two-piece, not to mention with all that A-lane control that he got. Yeah, without a doubt. Just a nice route right through mid. Bendy, I think, gets some unfortunate timing watching it. And doesn't work out for him, but right into round number six. Thrax, good for the first blood. Will be quickly traded from Priestley. Bendy's also going to keep this scope out. As we drop into the three versus three, and Sheldon also appears to have one himself. Oh, the timing on everything is just so difficult for Sheldon. He had to watch so many different things. I mean, same thing for Benny on top of the sniper. You saw him watching back tennis courts, top AC door, but even if you don't find those kills, it's information. And it's what St. Clair does with all this information that is just so stellar i mean from this last kill cam you would have expected st Clair to be on the offense it, 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 that is absolutely the case the way that they just completely stormed the b site as a whole they made all of davenport just feel so uncomfortable man it just kept them all trapped inside of the ac building inside of orange electrical whatever you decide to call it. i've heard like five different calls for it but it's the <laughs> aggression that pays dividends for the saints yet again we are all knotted up going into round number seven here we go both players. I love I love moments like these. Just waiting for the first peak. Glad to get the information. Should find the kill, but the support is there. And no trade will follow. As Thrax starts to spearhead this. Bendy has to get through him. Priestley also watching mid. Thrax has so much to deal with, but it looks like he's going to keep his life. No challenge comes through the front. And it's still numbers for the Panthers. Echo being spotted out over by Potts. That's going to cause a lot of doubt. The trophy systems are down. Bendy... He's got an AR this time around here, Austin. So he throws a shoulder and he communicates that over to realize you know where Gecko's last positioning was at was over by Potts. He reprises through bathrooms. That is a bold cross. Exit's going to be able to get on over here, but he chows inside of Orange. And he loses his life. So now Gecko, 1v2. That silence about to dissipate. Yeah. Just runs out. Tough spot for sure. 25 seconds. We'll be able to grab the bomb pretty easily, but. Now both players also going to split the map, and that makes it 10 times harder. He's just going to have to predict and read and, well, beam Priestley as he bangs open this door. And there he goes. <laughs> and there, <laughs> and there he falls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It, it's just... I just don't know why exit cross mid like that. I, you, didn't, you didn't have the AR assistance top paper. Had so much time just to fully retake back all the way through admin itself. Just goes for the fly and cross. It, it just again, it falls back to what I was kind of really ragging on the Panthers for is that it, it feels like that in these high tense situations, much like in the MC map one, their communication just falters. It, it's just not really there, it would feel like. And St. Clair, who split the map, like you were saying, just fundamentally sound. 4 3 goes the scoreboard. Saints going back towards this admin control. Play for a pick, and well, the lay of the land is truly yours. And oh, look at this. I mean, this is just going to be a four-man hit coming right at the top paper and bottom. Drax, though, he's not going to fall for any tricks. He's still good for the kill. 
And now no one else maybe wants to fly out there, but... Vice is thinking about it. He's looking for angles. He's trying to work in for this kill. 3v3 we go after that kill comes through off screen. And it's just incredible timing taking place right now as Thrax goes in and everyone else leaves. Oh, the drop oh. shot. Not going to be good enough. Vlas is going to get the better of Thrax. And he still maintains with that bomb. And strapped to his back. And he's got a sniper though. So to be able to take one of these sites might be a little difficult. See players number one and two, Gecko Sheldon. They have split the map. They're each defending their own bomb site. Bendy with his X-12. Dead Silence play. Worked out last time. And he might just get some incredible timing on a Sheldon. If he clears it, he doesn't. Sheldon gets the reverse Uno card. Timing can't find the kill, though. We're running out of time. Oh, my Sheldon. Doesn't finish off the kill. And oh, doesn't have Dead Silence. So going to be heard the entire time. Trucking down low. Gecko now needs to try to pull off a 1v2. It looks like he uses his Dead Silence to get over here. He takes up Bendy. Misses the shot, but the bomb's going to go down. And now a reach out comes through. A two-player to deal with. Everything stacked up against Gecko. Could he do it? Over the top of the bomb. The it's up. a snake fest. It's a 1v1. Reload comes through. Take the kill. No shots being taken. Gecko. Oh, Gecko finds the shots. And 1v2 is secured. Panthers, they tie us up at four. What the hell did I just want? <laughs> Oh, Peak Modern like, Warfare 2, Andy. It's like <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like the equivalent is like when you go to an arcade, like and you play like whack a mole, but it's like both arcade machines want to be whack a mole. Like nobody wants to go play Mortal Kombat. It's just like everybody just wants to play whack a mole. It's it needs to be said to you, the top of that bomb so I don't know, you know this Austin, I know a lot of viewers might not. That thing is made of thin paper. Oh, it, yeah. Snaking the bomb heady is not as strong as you would think, because when you pop up, that is not going to help out. By any stretch. I know that it's a fixture. It's loaded in, but it's not exactly a strong one. So he who snakes better has the better head glitch wins, I guess. I'm not too sure. Regardless, <laughs> we're even again 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, without a doubt. That Kenny is false security. But Priestley still going to bring in the aggression. This looked good with his sub. 8-4 and four for him as he draws another first blood. Exib is very tagged up right now for nades, and now he's going to lose his teammate Gecko. So much better round. Much more controlled. Saints with the opening kills. Now just trying to split the map a little bit. Fan on out. Force some tough rotations out of the Panthers. And Sheldon, well, he is just under fire. Has to completely retreat. I don't know how he's still alive. Yeah. And he's going to try to take the challenge here. These cards are still alive. Bendy doesn't want to be anywhere near this. The shots are in. But realize on the, uh, realize on the opposite side does take down Exit. So Sheldon, 1v4, finds the first. Got that silence. Last on the opposite side. These are crispy clean shots. He's not getting child from the opposite side. Not quite yet. They're letting Sheldon do his thing. Oh, oh if he reads oh. that. If he reads that and he knows where the last player is. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh that round gets a little interesting, but I like the way they play it. Priestley's just kind of in a weird angle here. Sheldon immediately sprints as he grabs the second. So, not going to fumble it. They will hold on. And it's just a great opening with all of those engagements. Priestley really kicking it off with that first blood. That would have been a massive fumble. It was like you talked to him. Priestley finding that first blood. It really does feel like that when St. Clair, when they win their rounds, the five that they have, it's always settled in like the first like 15 seconds, the first 20 seconds. They get the first, and then it feels like everybody from Davenport just kind of topple like dominoes. Could end here on offense, going back towards FBX cues, but they're leaving Benny behind. How are they going to respond this time? Can't let them get the bomb down for free. A little peek comes through the doors. Down low in orange. Pressure also through mid. Priestley's not in a good spot here. He might need help. Maybe he'll be able to work himself into a nice little tight corner and just wait. No one's going to push here from the Panthers. The bomb still has not crossed, so they do not have to commit to this if they don't want to, but there is just a lot of weird positions on the map where both teams hit the moment. Oh, Priestley with that dead silence play. He pushes back AC. He finds Sheldon. That's first blood. You got so much information. If you relays, just holding this signs cross. He knows that Thrax needs to come checks this as well. At least one player has to. But while that was all going down, the rotation for the bomb, it's over here at A. Oh, oh. quick scope. Doesn't land. Bendy wanted it, but he's not going to get it. And now Exib has had a very slow search and destroy. Would have to pull off a 1v3. Not going to happen. The Saints able to still edge out in the end. A 6-4 victory to put them 2-0 up in this best of five. This is just a... Uh... And full of strange rounds that we had here in the MC map number no two. Like, this one is uh, no different. But, you know, it, it, it says something that when you are the Saints, you go back to your initial offensive strategy of 
let's just full hit beat. The one difference was that they left Bendy behind. Now, throughout all of these offensive rounds that the Saints were throwing at Davenport continuously, they always played that mental warfare game is that they might end up going for admin control. They might try to execute over towards A. So if you're the Panthers, you do have to put a certain amount of consideration, if not full focus, from maybe one or two players towards mid lane over towards the A-bomb itself to deny such a push from coming all the way through. Now, when you see those three players cross, you're kind of stuck in mid-map. And Bendy can just push up all the way across that A lane while Panthers, they get first blooded. They have to react accordingly to get that mid lane control to make sure that that B plant does not come through uh, quick enough. And by doing so, the Saints just played it so perfectly, just holding down their irons and just waiting for the crosses to come to them. Just winning the gunfights all willy-nilly to take the map. I'm not gonna lie, I forgot Bendy started out 6-0 with that scope. There was just so many crazy moments. A lot of like 1v2s, 1v1s that took place in these rounds. I mean, hard fought battle from the Panthers. And at one point in time, they had the chance to take control of this map. It went down early 0-2, they brought it back, but just could no longer hang on to that advantage. And we started to see all these clutch moments come on through. A little snake in battle. It's a good moment at a gecko. Oh, yeah. Let me get this Over again. the top here. Yeah. A little back and forth. Who's going <laughs> to shoot first? Who's going to pop their head out? What is this? <laughs> My goodness. Oh, man. This is why when I play ranked games and I'm playing Search and Destroy, like, I, I just don't even toy with it. Like, if you're going to snake that heavily, you clearly want it more as far as RP is concerned. You can have it. You Thanks. can have my SR. I am not sitting there breaking my controller. I'm taking that chow. 25 times a week but 6-4 is the final score line here the saints eke out the search and destroy and again you know it feels like it's priestly and bendy yeah uh, mm. with the to coin a phrase from brody the usual suspects show up yet again relay has also had a great map number one eight and seven here ten and four for priestly eleven and six for bendy i, I mean these guys are just finding so many key gunfights and kills and multi kills at that within a single round that it just felt like that when the panthers they lose those first bloods but again, it comes into consideration that they kind of lose themselves across the map where each player is, what each player is looking for. And the Saints, who has a poor fundamental at an all-time high, are just tweaking out these wins. Just getting it done in the end. And I think that's what feels the worst for the Panthers is that they're not playing like, like levels below, you know, the Saints at the moment. They're playing very well. There's a lot of key moments coming on through for some of these players that we've been talking about. Sheldon's been great throughout these last couple maps. Thrash has had a lot of good moments. We just need to see everyone else, you know, be there with them, I feel like. And, uh, you know, maybe this Panthers roster could do something special. But that conversation that we were leading into where you don't want to have to reverse sweep, well, now they have to reverse sweep. It would be required if they want to stay alive and try to pull off this upset versus the Saints. Still very possible, but if they're going to do it, it's going to have to be done in, in an Ella Silo control here, Andy. Um, not going to be easy by any means, but we'll see if they can regroup, try to regain. We'll take a small break, ladies and gentlemen. We come back. Ella Silo control coming up. Hello, ladies and gents, and welcome back as we get ready for the map number three. If you are just tuning in, well, the Saints are sitting pretty 2-0 up, and it's been a pretty tight affair for the most part. Just about 50 points in the map one, 6-4 in the map two, uh, but it has been those final moments that the Saints have been better in so far here, Andy. Yeah, you know, probably closer scoreline than what we were expecting walking away from, uh, at least as far as the slaying category was concerned, from the Saints in map number one, and can even probably make some arguments as far as map number two is concerned but still respectable score lines coming through but it is an uphill battle to say the least a reverse sweep is what davenport needs to not only go negative as far as series win loss record is concerned remember coming into this three and three but to also take down in an upset fashion against the saints of st Clair, who are looking oh so good the biggest issue is that we're going to an elo control which again mm. if you're davenport you played a handful of times. You've lost the majority of the times. Not to mention how, as a full-on record, the Saints, they're 4-1 in control, and the only loss that they have is to Northwood, which they lost 0-3. The saving grace, of course, is that it was on El Asilo. They did lose it 1-3. Well, maybe a chance to be able to capitalize here for the Panthers, you know, with the loss. But, uh, you know, pretty hard-pressed, if you like, to say that confidently based off of at least what we've seen. And I think the biggest problem that I see coming into, you know, at least a game mode like Control is we haven't really seen a lot of proactivity. And what we were just talking about is that, you know, we weren't really seeing a lot of connecting happening between the players in the map number one. Now, I would say that it's even more important that players try to find a way to connect in a game mode like Control where you have to stack, you have to watch over each other in certain lines of sight. Uh, not easy to pull off offensive wins but you know certainly have seen it a lot more common you know as of late but i mean with all that said it feels like we need to see the teamwork come together here andy if you're going to take down the saints roster 
Yeah, it's something that we were giggling about, which is why I was cheesing when we came back. Just, uh, for Davenport, you got the juice, you got the sauce. Well, where's the flow, baby? <laughs> the Come flow, on, man. we got no flow. Davenport really need to be able to exemplify that, especially for a map mode combination that is LSC low control, where it feels like the meta, as far as this map is concerned, Teams have been getting a lot better at closing out offensive rounds. It really does feel like it always comes down to that one hit on either one of these two zones to make that happen. Well, let's get into it. Might be the last map for our first series. Could be a clean sweep for the Saints, or maybe we'll get some flight out of the Panthers. I have to see. Early kills going the way of Saints as they're actually going to find three down. A good read of the back as well onto Thrax. That's going to eliminate the flank. And now there's a chance to get some numbers on B. Oh, man. Typically, you never really see the initial B push working out, but I mean, the Saints, they find all the kills. Sheldon's the only one to find at least two so far. He needs to find more top tools, but again, where's the help? Everybody's getting cut down. You have Gecko that is top fried rock. You know that there's only one player that is getting on towards this zone. Second segment is going to be here before assistance even arrives. This is scary. Gecko does find a window push on through. Maybe a chance to be able to clear out the point, but you still got numbers here, and I think that means that they're likely going to shock it up. That should be the extra minute very early on. I mean, basically the very first attempt, the Saints are able to secure B, the unfavored zone here in LSC low, and they got two minutes to work for three takes on A. Definitely the hardest of the two to take. I mean, when St. Clair, they got on that B zone, they never relented as far as building control is concerned. It always felt like you had players in and around of tools trying to contest top barbecue as well. It's for Davenport, you found a couple exits, so... You're starting to shave away a lot of game clock. Rex, it sounded like an SMG up top. Took down Bendy all the way top pride rock. Realized, got himself a trophy system. Needs to be patient. He finds the first. Now your biggest concern is you got to deal with Sheldon up top. No way he lives from this, right? 4 HP, 6 and 0. Surely, the man will die. But he has not died yet. He is still very much alive here. No one wants to challenge through the window. Gecko, going to give him a second to peek. Sheldon still up top. Realize gets some good shots, but won't finish him off. And the defense so far will hold for the Panthers. But Bendy, he is now working a spawn trap. So any deaths from here on out right now for the Panthers could get very scary, very fast. You have to keep numbers out on the map. And now everybody is, in fact, out of the map. They are in the spawn trap. They are in the blunder here, Andy. Bendy is drawing outside the lines. The spawn trap is in. But when you have presence over here towards top tower, now players are going to start spawning on the backside of Pride Rock. Bendy is unaware of this. Trove system comes down. Finally, you deal with Bendy in that position, but can you get to the zone in time? That's the question. Have to touch. Have to dive in. Have to clear. A lot of things you have to do. And it looks like they will be able to find a couple, but Priestley is alive. One more 1v1, and Bendy will find the trade. I mean, that's just as crispy clean as you'd ever love to see it. That is an offensive win right off the bat for the Saints. That's gross. I mean, even Bendy comes off the respawn after putting them in the absolute spawn blender and finds yet another multi-kill. 11-3 and three in the round. But if they can't get this guy out from these positions, man, like, oh, it's disgusting. I mean, it felt like that Blast just could kick his feet up. Feet up. He's 3-5, and 2-4 right? and four for Priestley, who, again, was the player that we were really calling out a lot. We were just like, this guy's gross. It's been the Bendy show, man. 7-2 oh, yeah. and two for relays as well. You need an immediate answer here if you're down for Panthers. Six ticks or bust. Oh, it's going to be a tall ask, and just a much better start is what you would at least like to see. It is going to be a B execute. But Priestley is from behind. This is what we didn't see from Thrax last time. And Priestley snaps on Thrax for the double. That clears out a lot of the numbers, but still presence going to remain for the Panthers. Bendy is now behind the play again. He'll find kill number four. We'll see if he can get behind the play fully because Sheldon's starting to push out from the front. And he's still got numbers at least on B, maybe to secure a tick. Well, Sheldon's going to start looking for that top pride rock positioning. Maybe try to get a couple of spawn traps in. So I've exit. I mean, he's still on the zone. Clock is still stalled out at a minute, three seconds. But he doesn't have immediate assistance. I mean, you're so concerned if you are Panthers with this house control that the setup around the zone just wasn't good enough. And that allows Bendy to again hit this route. He's been over here what feels like a century. He finds yet another kill. Any kill back here is going to be a good one because it keeps Davenport away from the zone. And they got to start watching the flank. Like, like every single time you're watching them, and you have St. Clair's are just pushing through A. They're pushing through about a mid. And they're just coming behind the play. And the Panthers are just very stubborn in this push over towards B. They got the tick off the start, and in my mind, that's a success. Let's start yeah. moving over to A, but we haven't seen it happen yet. And now with 28 seconds, they will finally stop the clock. They got a couple members here, but 
They're gonna have to find a trade. And while Bendy will be traded, but Priestley and the aggression follows for the rest of the Saints. Well, Thrax looking to go oh. B. He does. He does deliver on two. The spawns, though. Not exactly parallel. If you ask me, and the sun comes in, Thrax was one HP. Bendy's sun will get Thrax off of that zone. Last ditch effort. You feel like they're already showing presence over at A. You can hold your irons here if you realize he's on a four. Seven and three. Flank from behind. Oh, ho, ho, Thrax! <laughs> will turn and burn. Nice play from him, but oh, they just all get cleaned up. And with five seconds, you're just going to have to funnel into Relays, who's just putting on another clinic. And that is going to be a stop of the clock, actually. There's a touch from Sheldon. He does win the one-on-one. -on -one. Hold on a second. This play is alive. He's going to have to read Bendy from behind, and Sheldon does it. 14-9, and nine, trying to do it all, but the nade clears him off. Team H can't get there in time. And I just gotta, I gotta echo what you said. I mean, you get that first tick on B, that's good enough for me. You start spawning parallel, like, go for A control. Get a player top tower, get yourself top money positioning, get that top patio as well. And get an SMG that's roaming around inside of green. It, it just felt like these core fundamentals that need to be exemplified at LSU little control just were not there as the Panthers were just relentlessly trying to get themselves on that B zone, trying to get themselves and maintain house control. They try to get Sheldon in that positioning towards the top side of Pride Rock, and it just doesn't work out. So much time exhausted. So many flanks were hit. Relays is 14-4. and four. Bendy's 16-7. and seven. Going back towards the BX queue. Davenport, we're not expecting it. Not expecting it. Now shifting over as all the weight falls on Sheldon's shoulders, and he's only able to deliver on one. Gecko, though. Let's find one over the top himself as... Laz is just going to try to sit here and stall the clock. And so far, so good. That tick is secured. He's got a read on Thrax. And, well, Priestley able to add in the support. Reinforcements starting to come off of spawn now for the Saints. And all four members from the Panthers are trying to come over and play defense. But, I mean, you're going to have to make a move. You're going to have to go. Priestley still finding kills. Sheldon will finally clear off two. And they will stop that second tick. Watch out for Bendy, though. Bendy loves the spawn trap. We saw him on the opposite side. Now he's all the way over by the shack. Getting this A lane control. He knows that there's going to be players that are going to be chowing out from top barbecue. And Priestley just chows and eviscerates Thrax. That should be A zone control. At least coming through for the time now for the Saints. Just have to read where the Panthers are trying to retake from. Oh, the play in the back, Bendy. He is back in the prime position. Next tip, though. Two in a row for him. Actually, three in a row. Just two in the, the actual point. And he's able to clear off. And, well, good defense so far. Starting to feel the pressure now. Maybe shift the other way. The Saints are going to have to make a move. A looks to be the target. You still have presence here, though. You're going to have to win some key gunfights before you're going to be able to secure the zone. Better proactivity coming out from Gecko. He's all the way in the flank. He's going to have Sheldon's assistance. They're looking for top money positioning, but it seems like Bendy got at least an audio cue. So he conveys that to his teammates on the opposite side, but the gunfights, the trades not coming up for the Saints. The second segment still being battled over Thrax. Sheldon will take down Blaz. But again, Bendy... He was over there on the fence line the entire time. So he's going for that top cliff positioning again. Trades are here. 25 seconds on the clock. Saints, they are just straight sprinting towards this B zone. Oh, but Bendy's position might not be fully effective this time unless they start to die. And yet the kills are starting to come through now. So now he could put the God spot back to good use. Exit. I mean, he's got to shoot through a windshield. Good luck. He's tagged up. Bendy looking for now the second as he backs up from the explosion. Under threat, under pressure, and Thrax will clean him up from afar. But the B point, while all that happens, will go over. 15, playing up against 15, but early control for the Saints right through mid as they transition right over to the next zone. Exit's trying to still find a couple of exits. He just needs to stay alive, and he can't. Realize it's there to take him down. At least off of those close shack spawns that come through for Davenport. They're able to get tower control. They're able to get their barbecue back in their favor. The one player that they don't have accounted for it's going to be Priestley who's working a dead silence play bottom lockers. Priestley has just been that playmaker. Six objective kills at the moment. Streak's going to be called in. Let's see if it finds any value. And, well, won't find any value, but information should still be good. 38 seconds to work with, and Sheldon finds a key kill up top in money. Now he needs to try to play his life and just hold on to these positions. It's a great setup that you have. You still got to worry about Bendy in from behind. But maybe if you can hold as long as you're alive in middle map, you can still keep them off the zone. Priestley finds a key trade. 20 seconds remaining. Relays has also got himself tower control. Gecko's on the flank, and he's really the only player that might be able to blow this up. Thrax is also inside of bottom billiards, but Bla Blast is going to be there at least for the trade. Got to stay on the zone, though, is the biggest problem. And Betty's back to his 
The old devious way is looking for a couple spawn kills. Dude, is he spawning back here? Like, I Feels just, like it. He's always in the back. Look out for Bendy and look out for Blaze as he's now in the corner looking for a couple more kills. Won't find it. No response now for the Panthers. And I don't think Thrax will be able to get them off the point. Wow. St. Clair makes slight work of Davenport here in the map number three. It's a 3-0 in the control and a 3-0 in the best of five. I mean, that is just picture-perfect control coming out from the Saints of St. Clair, huh? I, I mean, absolutely. Just, even in their opening offense, they just fully rush all the way over towards the V zone. They get away with highway robbery. And then Betty just seems to be the hamburger of LSC low control because, I mean, he was just always in the back. Not even just on offense, but also on defense. Looking for these spawn trap in these kills. Just nobody was trading him. It's not for a lack of their trying. Because you saw the nades coming off the spawn. It felt like that Bendy was one shot for such a long time. But it's the amount of time and the amount of players that it takes to get Bendy out from these positionings. That is so infuriating for Davenport to have to deal with. Both offense and defensive like. Not to mention for the lack of proactivity, I will say, for the Panthers on their offense and defensive side as well. You saw it towards the tail end of that defensive round itself when they started to get a few more kills. They started sure. to get the life advantage as well. They started to work a couple of these fights, started to get at least the offense money control, but it just felt like then in the trade department with St. Clair, they were able to recognize, okay, we need to play the trades. It worked out so much better. And then Bendy just gets into that position again where he is just keeping them locked in their side of the map. Bendy had a series, without a doubt, man. He had some crazy clips in the S&D. Great map number one. And a lot of key plays, as you highlight here in the map number three. Everything just looking solid, man, for the Saints. I mean, there's not really much more you could say. A 3-0 victory. A couple of close maps that they're able to close out. They show key fundamentals at the end of those said maps. Looking really good right now for the Saints in this division. And Davenport. I feel like they would learn a lot, I think, especially looking back over the control, just the amount of flanks that the Saints were just pushing through over and over and over again. I feel like it would be frustrating to watch back, but I know a couple of those just adjustments. Try to maybe just switch over to the other zone. When we talked about getting the first tick on B, it's those little things I think that make the difference here, but not enough. A lot to improve on. We'll see how they come back in the future. Saints got the flow, man. They are <laughs> just absolutely swimming in it like water. For all three game modes we saw is that their cohesion is just so, so good. And it really does say a lot when you're thinking about the Saints, sure. who, again, have three freshmen on their roster. Recently, the run returning player, who, again, was the pop-off player continuously for the Saints. <laughs> and he shows up in a massive way. I mean, it's just, if it's a sniper rifle in search and destroy, it's the AR that comes through in the response. 23 and 11, and I feel like about half of those... We're all spawn kills. Uh, this guy was just fighting these routes continuously. And, and I'll agree with you. I think that Davenport definitely have a lot to learn just off mm. of this as a whole. Just the flanks were a continuous nuisance for them. It's the same thing that we were talking about for map one, that they kind of come to these one-dimensional plays. And it just allows a team like Saints, who are just playing so fundamentally sound, just absolutely decimate them on a handful of different rotations and different plays that were being uh, exemplified throughout the entirety of this best of five series. But... For Davenport, I mean, your group stage might not be over, but being at three and four is no comfort, if you ask me. No, absolutely not. Lots to improve on, and we'll see if they can start to pick up some wins going forward. And you talk about just being this far, you know, into the season already. Wins going to be extremely important going forward for them, and we'll see if they can pick some up. But, I mean, on the other side, it's just all good news. It's just, I mean, just keep improving, right? Keep doing what you're doing right now for the Saints. I'm sure they'll go back and maybe try to clean up a couple of their you know, rotations in the hard point. I think that was also them just like realizing, listen, we're just out slaying you guys. I think they just stopped caring. They started challenging a lot more and, you know, taking those gunfights, letting the confidence really shine through. Um, and it certainly did. So good looks for them. And now we'll see how they're going to be able to improve going forward. Uh, but before we get to our next match, of course, we have to give another big shout out to our sponsors here, guys, for making sure that we can, in fact, put on the production, bring on the broadcast, everything that you see. Obviously, a huge thanks here to America's Navy as well as Fandom. If you guys are looking for some more information, we have Goats in Glory, the Navy's esports team. If you guys are looking for a little bit more information around the Navy, around opportunities, Goats in Glory, whatever it might be, make sure you guys head over to America's Navy and you might have something there for you. If you just do not know what you want to do, it might be something there. So go take a look. We've been talking about it. So go have a little gander and see what's up. But for now, we're going to throw to a break. We're going to get ready for a second series. So make sure you guys don't go too far.